Hey, before the beginning of the show, I want to apologize. I'm still working on a new computer, and I'm at a new location, and things are very new, so I'm getting used to things. My volume is very low, and I'm sorry, but the show is still worth listening to. So, enjoy yourself some casual truck. too. Everything's great. All right. Hey, folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil. With me today is Meditox. Mad. Meditox. Say hello, hello. Meditox. Greetings, people. Meditox is just some stranger I met on Skype. Woo! Woo! All right. Today's uh, question is uh, what is spam? Spam? Spam. There are many theories as to what it's actually made of, but I think the ingredients are secret for government reasons. Well, I believe the uh, the government is actually feeding people uh, this like bio created meat substance that's like slowly invading their minds, and it's like a mind control like boy. That would explain. Uh, it's like, that that uh, would explain the acronym of spam, which is scientifically produced animal matter. Exactly. Oh, and, I uh, <laughs> oh no, go on, please. <laughs> oh no, I'm just going to continue rambling on about my nonsense theory. F- where, fill like, the air, dude. Dead air is bad. Yes. For of course. Uh, so as as you consume more spam, you are more uh, vulnerable to propaganda and the governments as they uh, guide you, the sheeple that is, into their whim and the... Uh, make money off of your uh, ignorance that is produced by consuming spam. I- ignorance? I like the idea of money producing ignorance. <laughs> it's a very real thing if it's produced by spam. It's a byproduct I'm too smart for them spam. though, so spam I don't buy spam. And, yeah, spam and spam byproduct, which is in fact ignorance. <laughs> it's like this tangible like aura that's like encompassing spam and it like it comes off of it, sort of like fumes of just like uh, condensed ignorance. And just imagine like eating something that's like producing like ignorance fog or whatever you would call it. I- I'm not real sure. I- are you familiar at all with any anime? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Okay, there was an anime a long time ago called Key the Metal Idol. I have not seen it. Or and it. friendship actually manifests as a gelatinous goop. That poured out of people's eyes and ears, and <laughs> friendship was just awesome. I'm just imagining all like the scenarios that, that would like, I don't know, like this guy's like all depressed and he's like, dude, you know I'm your friend. Look at all my friend Jello. <laughs> I'm here for you, man. man. He's like, it's just, it's life hard. I just, I'm here for you. And like Jello in this like group is just like. Just out wiping of, like, every jello orifice. on his face. I'm here for you. <laughs> and they're like embracing each other, and just like jello and goop is just pouring out. Jesus Christ, who left all this friendship out all over the floor? <laughs> we have to get a mop. It's gonna take me uh, weeks to. God, this guy really was a friend. <laughs> God damn, anime protagonists freaking gooping everywhere. Their friendship. Well, this was just trying to get by. At least corporate janitors don't ever have to worry about it. Yep. I am not your friend. They are eaten. They've eaten this spam and therefore are liable to not caring or having friendship. All right, I'm calling it right now. The name of this episode is Friendship Jello. <laughs> friendship Jello. Oh god. Oh god, it's Jell-O. coming out of my eyes. Ah! But on the bright side, I can use it to chill back my hair and look like a greaser. It's so disgusting, but I like you so much. <laughs> Man, for having friends is messy. <laughs> I'm just imagining fr- friends education in in high schools. You know, a lot of people want to be your friend, but you need to use protection because that stuff gets everywhere. The roads uh, are slick with friendship. Cars are sliding into ditches. You have to know when and where to talk to your friends. Otherwise, it could be a serious problem. I can also just kind of see, like, you know, all all the teenage girls who talk to their friends on the phone all have problems with getting scuff, their, their cells just disgusting and have to wrap it in rubbers. 
there would be like designated hangout areas in like parks and like cafes and stuff where there's like gutters all around. So you would like sit in like a hot tub where like all the jello and goop would just like pour out so it wouldn't like get everywhere and just pour into the like, like, I don't know, the beveled ground. Well, if, if people weep despair, I imagine that's the key thing used to, uh, to wash away the, the friendship gel. Despair, of course, appears as a purple, noxious liquid. <laughs> and they, like, in movie theaters where friends go to hang out or whatever, and it gets gooped up. After everybody leaves by, you know, swimming out of the theater, the, uh, the attendees turn on the sprinkler system of noxious purple substance. So they have, like, bottled tears in, like, a water tower, and they just, like... They're pu it's like pipeline to like all the major areas where like they have too much friendship they have and it just sort of sprays everywhere of course all towns are are, are now uh, they're now by government appeal have to be have to have both a water tower and a despair tower and now we've turned into nightmare <laughs> it's very necessary otherwise you'll have a serious friendship influx and then no one will have a good time. It'll be a huge mess. If you're gonna be somebody's friend, you're gonna have a bad time. Oh man, I don't know where this road goes, but I'm taking it. <laughs> this is why I do the casual truck, by the way. Just because of the crazy, messed up <laughs> ideas that, come, that I, I tend to reuse in one of the comics or another. I like the idea of a right. despair comic, or I'm sorry, a despair tower. A tower just filled with despair so it can be easily pumped into people's homes. <laughs> yeah, like you get home after a nice day of hanging out with your uh, homies, so you go into like the sink and you like, you've got like, instead of like hot and cold water, you've got like a joy and like despair tap. And you like, like the right one's got like a purple sort of like knob on the end, you just like turn it and you start like washing the friendship off your hands. How did it come to this, you say, trying to wash the friendship off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta get some support. work done. I can't have all this friendship on my hands and get over my keyboard and ruin everything. Things used to be simpler, but, you know, no less than five years ago. Why did Key the Middle Idol have to come out and teach us all that friendship is a jelly? <laughs> oh, oh man, this guy is trying to race me. I'm gonna run him off the road. <laughs> uh, have you played any of Euro Truck Simulator? Um, not really. It's got a I mean, lot I know of... what it's all about. It's just like, it's something you do when you talk to people or like listen to a podcast or something. Yep. And that's just like, I don't know. When I'm usually like listening to a podcast or like, I don't know, talking with someone, I'm usually just drawing. So, I mean, yeah. It just doesn't really interest me all that much because it's sort of like one of those like chill, time wasting games. And I feel like I waste too much time already, so I mean... I, I kind of understand now. Where's that car that I just ran off the road? He's disappeared. Is he in the sky? No. Is he still in front of me somehow? Yes! Yes, he is. Well, he needs more work. There you go, just ran over him. Awesome. There are, uh, I don't know, there, it, it's one of these relaxing zen games, and you're right, it's something you do while you're listening to a podcast or an audiobook, or you just talk with some random stranger you met on Skype for no reason. Yep. I've also been playing an awful lot of Talos. Talos? What Talos is that about? Talos Principle. Now get is that, Wait, no, wait, I think I know what that is. It's that puzzle game which is about, I think you're a robot or something? It is definitely a thinking man's puzzle game. Uh, the puzzles are all, like, they, they honestly could not work in any other way, like a top-down or anything. They'd have to be, it had to be a first-person puzzle game. I heard some, like, like that. you got some, like, interesting things. Like, you have to, there are certain parts where you have to do, like, a time clone assist, where you, like, you do some moves and it, like, does, like, a paradoxal, like, Time thing, and it, then it records can, your movement, and then yeah, the that clone of you repeats whatever it is that you did. So yeah, it's pretty cool. 
the uh, reason I get into it is because I'm very much uh, a student of philosophy, both modern and ancient, and um, it has a lot of philosophical conundrums. Uh, there are some things that are in the game that are just beautifully ironic. Uh, of course, you know that you play a, well, a robot. In the game, you are trying to log in as, a, in, as an administrator, and to prove that you're not a robot, you have to take a test. So here I am, a human being, playing the part of a robot, playing the part of a human being, or pretending to be a human being for another computer. Hmm. You want to talk about meta? <laughs> That's, that's meta right there. So many levels. You're just sort of like going back and forth. And that's, that's how it goes. There's... When the game starts, you're only given one instruction. Solve puzzles. R really. Like a voice from the heavens tells you, solve puzzles. But as the game continues on, you realize that there's this kind of... There's a storyline that's unfolding. And suddenly finding out what's happening, like what has happened, why you are here, what your purpose is, starts becoming more and more important. And, oh man, it uses up all my personal, me, the, my system resources to figure out just what's happening. And I feel drained, but oh, it's such a good feeling. You're sitting there just like at a desk and you've got like post-it notes all over the walls with like interlinking theories. You've got like thumbtacks. You're like, well, this connects to this. Well, based on your description that I've heard, it sounds like there was probably a bunch of tests set up to, like, uh, prove that, like, robots could have sentience or, like, uh, improve intelligent AI, I guess. Well, they ask questions. They... Uh, what, what actually happens is you're, you're combing through archives. You're coming through, like, a, a library, and as you're going through this library of, of different files, usually just little segments, um it starts throwing questions at you that you're meant to think about. It, it very much, the palace principle wants you to think about stuff. Um, so they'll say things like, uh, somebody came up with the idea, if you were to wake up tomorrow as a robot, would you feel any different? What would you do? I, I guess that really depends if, like, I don't have emotions or not. Because, like, Okay, if I had emotion still, I might, like, be really, like, disturbed or, like, what's the word? Like, kind of thrown off guard, I guess. I don't know if I'd feel too much different unless, like... We're assuming that you're going to have emotions of some sort right. or an emotion circuit. So I, as a robot in this whole scenario, uh, am I, like, the only person around or is, am I, like, you, just now a you robot? You are you. You wake up in your bed. You're a robot. Is everyone else a robot, or is like everyone else a human? I it didn't say. Let's assume that everybody else is human. Okay. So well, you're, you're then the only thing I would. That's changed. I would probably be like prejudiced against, or like uh, what's well, not prejudiced, discriminated against. You go because now I am a robot. Also, my parents and my family and everybody probably would like not associate me with an actual robot. And everyone would probably just think I'm claiming to be me, when in reality, real me is being kidnapped and replaced by a robot. I don't know. It'd probably be just me on the run, and it'd probably suck a lot. <laughs> so, so... So this is and how... Then, like, this is how 80s pe movies start, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, um... I guess because P I would be, like, this weird robot, and I guess mo people would probably want to reverse engineer me and take me apart and see how I work. So there's another reason I'm running away. His joints run uh, on friendship gel. Huh. That keeps me all good and greased. Unfortunately, being a robot and having friends is kind of hard. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would love to have a friend robot. That would be fucking awesome. I'd be like, can you hack this? And you'll be like, no. And I'll be like all disappointed, but I'd still be your friend because you need that friendship <laughs> gel for your joints. Otherwise, I would rust away and fall apart, simply a husk, shell of what was formerly a human. I would be pissed if I woke up in the morning as a robot. I would be angry, because it means that all of these memories that I have currently have been programmed in, and oh. I'm like, I don't remember being a robot, which means that these memories aren't real, 
which means that somebody is manipulating me, and that makes me mad. So I, I didn't even think like, about it like that. So, like, <laughs> that means everything, like, you thought you knew wasn't actually real. Well. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. I hate I hate it when people try to manipulate me, so I try to uh, uh, hunt down my creator. And steal his I would, girlfriend. I guess, I guess, like, uh... I don't know. I, I guess I would be asked the question, are my memories based on someone else? Or am I like, well, is everything literally fake? Or was like there another person that had all these memories that I was just sort of like modeled after the brain of? Yeah, isn't it messed up? I've, I've made like, uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before in some of my previous videos, but if I ever encounter myself, I've already set down a rule of what I have to do just so I know it's me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> make what? Yeah, totally, totally, just sloppy kisses everywhere. I don't just care make it out. That speaker's gonna get tongued. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I probably would have some really weird code word or something, or I would mention something that like only I would know about. Like I don't know. I would ask some weird question about like one of my characters or something. Or just some really weird non-logic that only my silly mind would have the answer to. Yeah, some kind of in-joke. That makes sense. An in-joke with myself. Now, you know, you wake up as a robot and you actually know that. And then you actually meet yourself, I guess. Oh man, this and is then, getting too weird. And now you've convinced real, your real version of you that you are actually him or something. <laughs> oh. Now what do you do now? Do you do you want to like fight for dominance, or do you want to just sort of like be like, hey, dude, I'm you, but like a robot. We should hang out. Well, I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't be happy with two of me. So I I, I don't know. I guess we'd probably hang out and we'd, we'd get fat because we should exercise more, but we won't. We won't. <laughs> like, hey, dude, do you think what I'm thinking? Of course I'm thinking what you're thinking. That's Are what I'm you? talking about. Let's go! And then we just, like, without speaking about anything that we're about to do, we go and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I end up going in opposite direction. Where are you going? I'm, I'm, what do you mean, where am I going? I'm going for the pizza. I'm making logical decisions based on your memories, you idiot. Look at this way. This is what you want to do. I don't care what you think you want to do. I know what you want to do, because I'm you. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, I guess you have a point. <laughs> Oh man, it just brings up so that's the kind of thing they, they do. That's the kind of thing they make you think of in the Talus Principle. Yeah, the, the Talus Principle itself, I'm just going to give the spoiler now if you don't know what it is. And it has a lot to do with the story. The Talus Principle is that no matter how abstract you may find the world or how philosophical you try to think about the world, ultimately, you need your blood. You, you need to live. You are made of a physical substance, there is reality you have to face. So that's what the Talus Principle actually is, and that has a lot to do with the ongoing storyline that's happening in the text files you find. I want to throw up a spoiler warning for somebody uh, in the video. Oh, yeah? Just like, skip ahead to not be having the story spoiled. That's not really just, in, just in case someone actually cares. Well, it's an actual principle. You can look it up. It's well, just... yeah, I get... Well, you know... Yeah, I guess it's sort of like saying you spoiled, like, the, the Nature Titanic. Channel or something. You're like, I was watching this science documentary, and they were talking about this really cool thing. Nope! Don't spoil it for me, bro! But, but this is really cool! It's like a, it's a scientific fact. No! I want to watch it myself! <laughs> you're, you're spoiling it! Stop spoiling it! But, but, the gravity of Jupiter has an effect on deers. No, I don't want to hear about it! <laughs> no! Don't no, stop! And you're like, but like they were talking about how like maybe all the bacteria from Earth is actually coming off of Venus and it's toxic atmosphere. Like, no! La la la! I'm not listening! La, la, la. <laughs> Spoiling science. Oh man, I've been reading this book. It's called Physics 101. Oh no, 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 stop. I'm reading that myself. I don't want to get ahead. I don't want to spoil anything. You don't, you don't want to hear about the sex scenes? No! <laughs> I'll get to it when I get to it. I'll be more surprised. But now I won't because you ruined it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to ruin the rest then. There's a coloring section in the back. <laughs> Darn it! I Why would you do that? Now's a good time to bring up that I might be a little drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. Dang it, now I won't be as pleasantly surprised when I get to the coloring book. Damn it! Why would you do this to me, bro? 
<laughs> necessary materials for reading this book. Pencils, paper, a computer, the internet, crayons. <laughs> oh, oh man. I need to find, you know, I don't even know where I am. I've been driving for so long that I, I actually have no clue where this road leads. Oh good, I'm near a town. It's, ooh, it's a town that I haven't been to. Bonus. Means we're gonna start wrapping it up. I told you this wouldn't go on for long. I only record for like maybe 20, 30 minutes at, yeah. at a time. And the Skype call is saying we've been talking for about 26 minutes, so. Yeah, plus all that time though that I was messing around. Oh my God, there's a guy in front of me. Well, I'm part of the, the player character aristocracy. Get out of my way. <laughs> you are a computer. You have no feelings. <laughs> That's pretty much how I feel. They are not conscious. Oh man, the question of what is consciousness is just weaved throughout that game. I love that game. I love Talos Principle. It's my kind of pretentious. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's a good question that you asked at the end of the video. I thought about starting with it, but spam seemed more important. And I mean, if we didn't talk about spam, we wouldn't have had to talk about uh, friend jelly and then the spare water towers and then all that nonsense and then Oh my god, it just occurred to me. Robot-controlled despair towers. Because, of course, they'd want to control the friendship jelly. I mean, surely they've got some kind of chemical process that separates friendship and despair so that they can use it to grease their gears, joints, things. And the robots, uh, they have like a, they look like there's a robot uprising in the distant future led by me after I wake up and realize that I'm actually a robot and all my memories are fake. So like I eventually build more of me and then we all uh, become identical clone peoples. So like you thought two of me was good, well now I've got like 70. And then we all just go and I have no idea. I guess I wasn't thinking ahead. Now it was seven you mean, I didn't have any plans. Do what, do what I'm planning man, have a gigantic <laughs> robot orgy. <laughs> man, the <laughs> the robot orgy will be efficient and productive and may cause enough friction to create earthquakes. I don't know. <laughs> how did I, how did I get and then we'll here? get more despair. And then, like, the friendships that are forged through the tragedy will give us even more friendship juice. Oh, man, where am I going to get all this despair from? Hmm. High school. We should go to a different country. <laughs> High schools. High schools. High schools have the the most despair. I'm imagining us though as like not very like android, adrenal like humanoid robots, but we're like we've got like a big like tin can body and like treads, and so we're like like Johnny really... Five from Short Circuit. Yeah, and like you go like you go into like a high school, but you're like wearing like a snapback and like a jersey that's like loosely pulled over your like mechanical limbs, and you're like talking like trying to be hip and like trying to like infiltrate the school like. Greetings, home dogs. I am a youth, like you or I. Oh me, and he like swivels his head back and forth. It's like his little eyes flash. I am a normal human being, like you or me. <laughs> what? Is, wait, is that guy a robot? No, it can't be. Look at look. He's got a backwards cap. That means he's from the nineties. He's he's human. He like slowly like crosses his arms, and his head just goes. Zzz. Throaty. Yep, dog. I am alive. Yes. Isn't this just the swaggiest? <laughs> Swag. Oh, I'm glad I invited you on. <laughs> okay, yep. I on. gotta start wrapping this up. <laughs> Hang on a second, though. I gotta bask in swaggiest, man. <laughs> This show with swag or whack. They're, they're interchangeable, right? Ah, oh, the proverbial hook, yo. <laughs> Everybody says yo now. <sighs> okay. Uh, we're wrapping up. <laughs> you got any shout outs you want to give? Uh, not particularly. All right. It's good for me. I'm going to park in this warehouse parking lot. Nobody will know. I'm going to check out behind the scenes where all the lot lizards are. There are no behind the scenes. So 
so no lot lizards. This makes me a sad friendship producing robot. All right. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I'm gonna call that good. Yep. Or evil, I don't know, something. And uh, a whole episode of just great nonsense material. Sure, at least we had fun though. Uh, yep. Say, say goodnight, Matadox. Good night. Goodbye, everyone.